Hello everyone, it was a wonderful Monday night. Oh, and that is the wrong screen, but we'll stick with it for now. No, we won't. We'll lie about it. It's fine. How is everyone doing tonight? So good to see you. I am I am chill. I I had a really relaxed day today. Work was was very, very uh, laid back. So that was good. Um, especially since Saturday, as I had said, Saturday night when I actually streamed uh, Resident Evil 3. Whoop, nope, that was the wrong screen because this one shows it. Um, was was pretty rough. It was a rough uh, Saturday night, but we, we made it through. We're okay. We're alive. We're, we're doing well and we have soda. Mmm, exquisite. So anyway, uh, today, if, if you couldn't have guessed from said title and from the game that I've showed, um, we're going to be playing RE3 again. But uh, I feel like I have the need to uh, do what I would probably do as, as a kid back when I would get new video games. is just kind of mess around. We're just going to look into all the things that are going on in the game and just talk about how I felt about it, um, how I would review it, I guess, and then how other people are feeling about it. I've looked at a lot of reviews and a lot of different people's opinions, and some of them ag I agree with for sure, some of them I don't. Um, but uh, we're going to do that as I screw around, probably in assisted mode, just so we don't have too much of a, of an issue just screwing around with zombies and, you know, having fun and not dying consistently. Um, not that, like, hardcore wasn't actually too bad. I imagine I would have uh, died more. Um, there were a few moments where I was being a little thick, and so I didn't really, really realize what I was supposed to be doing. But, uh, and all in all, this game at least was pretty good about telling you what you needed to do. At least, at least for me, I, I feel like I'm I'm getting slower with the kinds of things that video games want you to be looking at. Um, so let's, let's pull this back up here. Let's let's get that game a running and a rolling. There we go. Um, all of our things are going perfectly. I hope everyone everyone is having a good day, and I hope things are are going well out there. Um, I know I continually pipe through video games that are about uh, disease and illness and uh, our results terrible. Uh, uh, just just uh, talking about uh, with the terrible uh, disease-ridden world we currently live in and how uh, this game is just all of, all of that. Um, actually, we're going to reread over what this the, what assist actually gives you. It gives you aim assist, recover a certain amount of health automatically. Enemies are a little weaker. Begin the game with an assault rifle, which is kind of cool. Receive more ammunition when crafting. Okay. One thing I was actually concerned about is if it would change your... Uh, is if it would change how dodging works because dodging was something that I did. Um, but I feel like I didn't, uh, I had a hard time getting the timing down almost because there's moments where you obviously get the, the perfect dodge and it works out really well. Um, and sometimes it gives you bullet time or you can do a fun move with like the knife or whatever. This pandemic has spread faster than any disease in and this whole thing, this whole thing with how news is now is just the worst and the best at the same time. Um, this intro did a lot for, I think, the setting of the game. It worked really well as compared to the original. I think this did... I think this did a lot to bring you actually into this world, even though we're kind of already in it, in a sense. Um, they did a great job with the opening, and I'm, I'm kind of glad that they got to Nemesis quickly. I, I think the entrance was terrifying. Um, it was very horror movie. It, they did a great job with it. Um, I, I do still like the original on how it introduced Nemesis, but I think how Jill just comes out of a burning building being attacked by zombies didn't have as much power as her being chased by Nemesis. Just on that front. But we're going to talk about it. I think my uh, my general assertion of this game is, I, I mean, if we're going to give it a number, it's got to be somewhere between 7 or 8 out of 10. I really like it. The setting and the atmosphere is really, really good. Um, the problem that comes, though, is that uh, is the length of certain things. Because the game, it does a lot of interesting things. Because we've never had... An introduction quite like this so we've had first person resident evil that happened in seven but with this um it's kind of interesting because you weren't really expecting it because we knew it was going to be a third person view whole thing but with this this just gives you kind of an interesting look into 
just Jill's life and the world as it is, because there's a lot to look at in her room and, and things to, to see. Um, and you could probably spend a lot of time looking at this stuff. I spent a little bit of time when I first started just kind of looking at stuff. You know, you find the beret and the books and all of her fun posters and stuff. Got her telephone, and I'm pretty sure you can... You, I'm sure Nemesis is in this, right? Like, you can kind of see him in, in yeah, like there, I think. But, uh, you know, this is just your, your classic horror movie kind of like, you know, dream sequence kind of thing. Um, oh, <laughs> that was a fun turn. Um, but it, uh, it really makes you think of just classic horror movie trope of, you know, can't sleep, having the nightmares. And if you notice, both times that Jill has a nightmare, you are in first person mode for both. Um and then obviously when you come out of it you're no longer you're still in first person but but that was just for the the scares there's nothing really to read in dreamland can't go outside it's 21st um, but I just wanted to look around a little bit more because I, I I looked around a bit but I didn't really uh I didn't really take my time too much we'll even deliver to Mars um so the playing around, uh, at least story-wise, and what this did, I think, uh, to characterize Jill, um, this game did a lot for that. I think uh, Jill definitely reacted more realistically. Obviously, a lot of people said that she's sassy Jill now, that she says a lot more, you know, ridiculous kind of one-liners, but the ones that seem a little bit more realistic. Um, 90s and cheesy, for sure, in a sense. But uh, this whole scene where she's just thinking about and dreaming about the mansion experience and like what would happen if the incubation period was really long and so like she's going to become a zombie she just doesn't know it yet it's really scary and it and it's great for you know for you know foreboding like it's just such a foreshadow of the fact that she's gonna get infected um because if you've played the original we all know that she's going to get infected that's part of the storyline Um, so that's great foreshadowing, and I think it's fun to know to know what's going to happen generally, but the fact that she has a calendar with these three days saying, escape Raccoon City, you know, like, we're gonna get out of here, I hate the city, it's run by Umbrella, basically, you know, it's all terrible, and those of us who've played the game are like, well, it's gonna take that long, because we know what happens over the course of the next few days, um, but it's just funny, because it's the worst month of my life, I actually didn't notice that before, um, it's just interesting to see that, like, there's a lot of things that are kind of, you know, just foreboding, like, it's going to take her three days to escape. Not that she knows that, or at least knows that it's going to be the way that, uh, as difficult as it's going to be. We can turn on the lamp. I didn't notice that before. She's been pilling, dude. Yeah, no, I ran through this. Oh, dude, and she, she hasn't been sleeping on her bed properly. Holy junk. I didn't really pay attention as much, but yeah, her room is actually way, way messier than I expected. You kind of see the arm wave there. That's fun. Um, and you get the light switch. Um, but I think I read, I read through that guy, looked at the investigation notes. I missed this guy uh, for some reason. Unsealed envelope. They got me pinned down at home. Guy across the street are watching me from their window 24 7 are they irons men umbrellas i don't know and there's no real difference anyway i know that they're what they're trying to do they want to wear me down torment me into compliance and it's working i barely i'm excuse me i'm barely eating barely sleeping i'm going crazy i feel like the living dead oh that's that's great but I won't let them win. I have to get out of the city and find a way to make them accountable they'll send someone to silence me of course if you hear that I've been killed or whatever it is they uh, or whatever it is they do to people like me. You must pick up the investigation where I left off. I've enclosed my files. They'll tell you everything you need to know as long as this package isn't intercepted. I I'll be moving out at night. Five days. Wish me luck. This would have actually been really good to have seen before. Um, because that explains a little bit more why Brad is being secretive. I mean, I had my suspicions. That explains a little bit more as to why Brad is being secretive um, about getting us the pizza and just that, you know, Raccoon City or the Umbrella, excuse me, is watching her and that she knows someone's going to get sent to try and take her out. Um, yeah, this is Brad's secret, secret note. 
Um, I, I love the extra meat supreme part. That just gets me. Um, so it's it's kind of cool to see a little bit more between Brad and Jill, I guess, just with that note. I mean, Brad lasts, I mean, probably about as long as he did in the original. Um, probably even a little bit less. But he, he's made out to be a bit of a better character than he was before. Bakery bed, raccoon milk. Is, it, is there a hint in here? There's donuts. There's like eclairs. I'm going <laughs> to, I want to keep opening and closing this until I find something special. Is there a secret weapon we hide in the, in the refrigerator? Um, is there an herbal, herb salad, something? Can I look at the ice cream? Is there any ice cream? No. Oh, she's got the rocket launcher up there. <laughs> that's, that's awesome. I didn't notice that before either. A lot of fun things on here. Anyway, 90s. Yep, yep, yep. Another calendar with days circled. Getting ready to leave Raccoon City. All right, enough of that. Um, there's a lot of fun details in here, and I'm glad I actually came back to reread that. That actually one thing. That, that adds a little more, you know, sense to some of the story, why Brad did what he did, but also it makes some sense as to why... Uh, or it, it actually, that also adds a bit of foreshadowing to the whole nemesis conflict of, you know, she's 100% sure Umbrella's probably going to send someone to take her out, so she's got to leave because she's being followed, she's being watched, and she's probably going to be killed. Um, and that's just like, has nemesis written all over it, obviously. And the graphics, they did a great job with the graphics, man. But the, the look they gave to her... And how they've added to her character are great. The extra story elements they add, at least about talking a lot more about her investigation. And talking about how... One more time. Talking talking about how... Uh, we can keep doing it, so there's got to be something to it, right? Oh, now we're third person. That's right. Um, they definitely characterized Jill. They definitely gave her more... Can we let it go to voicemail? I'm curious. They definitely gave her the the ability to kind of like be outside of you know being a stars member on a mission and is now just like completely completely like on her own and the world's going to hell um she definitely has the opportunity to be way more uh sarcastic and obnoxious Hello? and sassy as she needs to be brad is that you listen you gotta get out of there what are you talking about and the look is nice she looks good all right let me grab my This entrance was pretty cool. Rather unexpected. Um, I don't understand how we got into the room <laughs> next door and then then punched through the wall. Like, Did he knock on the, uh, the door next door and was like, yeah, this is easy. Also, I don't understand the, the paper bag <laughs> look. Or the, he looks like he's covered in trash bags to start with, with a lawnmower engine on the front of him. Um, I don't understand how he's seeing through all that. <laughs> Okay, you can't really do... You can turn around, or you can run backwards, but... Can't turn around. I just wanted to screw a little bit more with some of these these moments in the early introduction, because when I start a game, I usually like to just follow what they want you to do, just to, you know, be with it. Oh, stuttered quite a bit. But, uh, yeah, obviously there's probably not going to be too much unique to see. Okay, we'll go. Um, what the hell? Yeah, that guy falls. Um, they did a lot to show you the, the, the kind of craziness that's going on. I mean, in the original, they did an okay job of doing this by, you know, having there being innocent people you know, running away from people. They they have a little bit of cutscenes of Jill running away from zombies, and they're trying to establish, like, zombies are everywhere. It's really tough to escape from them. And there are people just scattered everywhere. Um, this, this game did a great job showing, like, it's pandemonium. Like, it's nuts out here. Um... <laughs> that, that explosion gets me. That's great. Also, all these, all these 
potted plants that are blocking our way. That's exciting. A lot of wall breaking in this one. I like wall breaking, to be honest. I know a lot of people memed about <laughs> Nemesis breaking through every single wall. Um, I would actually prefer them to be more... Uh, uh, to actually happen while you're playing the game because... Or, like, actually in control of everything. Can I just... Oh, I can tell her to stop. Okay. Um, oh, did we not go fast enough now? No, we did Um... I would prefer us to be in full control when he actually breaks through a wall because him breaking through a wall and attacking you is way more, you know, I feel like affects you way more than, uh, than actually just seeing it and just not being in full control. Which he does once or twice, but, uh, like when you're fighting with Mr. X and stuff, like, or when he breaks through walls, you're, you're terrified because you have to keep controlling yourself. Whereas these are just kind of cute starting moments, and yes, no big deal. I'm not sticking around. Just look around you. The longer we wait, the more screwed we are. Also, the the mouth movements don't seem to 100% match up. I'm not sure if that's always the case, but. I like that he refers to his arc lay because he was in the helicopter and not in the mansion. I feel like he would have said it. Oh, it's just like the mansion, but didn't really walk around here too much. Um, yeah, Jill's very sluggish in this at the beginning, so you can't really go super duper far, super fast. Let's actually try and go back to from where we came. Um, so getting to the major things that I think about this game, um, I had a fun time. This game was absolutely hilariously fun. I enjoyed it. Got through it in two stream sessions. Which was, which was good. Um, a lot of people complained that the game is short. Um, I think this game is actually pretty good that it's short, in a sense. I think that, I mean, the original was uh, shorter than most of the other Resident Evils. And I think this one kind of benefits from that. From the point they want you to feel pursued the majority of the time you're playing. But to have that entirely the whole time isn't isn't always possible or always that much fun you got to make do with what you got i want to go this way this looks really interesting um i got a stars van i wonder if he drove that over then again he was just across the street apparently oh hey oh shoot this is his drop pod man I would have liked to have seen him drop, so I guess he just dropped down and just kind of... He probably went through a fire escape. Maybe it was a giant thing that chased you, Jill. Okay, that's a, that's a cool detail that I missed before. I didn't realize that. That's awesome. So the game is definitely shorter. Um, but it makes for fun playthroughs, I think, honestly. It... Uh, Gosh, it's, it's difficult, and it has a sense of openness at the very beginning, which gives you a lot of time to kind of, you know, try and explore and, and see what, you know, is in Raccoon City, which was similar to the first, the original game. The problem is, though, is I agree with people that it feels a lot shorter originally. Um, I would have loved to have been in Raccoon City streets way longer than we were. Um, but it, it feels like it definitely... Uh, not that it got cut, per se, but just that they uh, they went from having you in the semi-open world almost feeling. Like, it felt really cool, all the places that were there and that you knew you could get to, even though it was semi-locked down. But it just ended really quickly. Um, I'm also upset that you can't really... Uh, and this is another thing that I guess we could get into. But the, uh, the bar is obviously one of the locations that you used to be able to go into. Uh, but doesn't really you don't really go there anymore. Or, uh, also, I think the thing that I saw lamented the most that wasn't in, uh, RE3 here, or this one, was actually going inside Clock Tower. The, uh, apparently Clock Tower, I mean, it was a fun part of the game, and I really liked it, uh, in the original, and I'm, I'm also kind of like, oh man, I thought we are gonna, I was hoping we'd be able to go back inside, you know, and, and do that whole rigmarole, hey buddy, 
Um, that's dodge, right? Yeah. That's that's good stuff. It detects when you bounce into things. Um, which I'm okay with the games being different. I'm okay with them each having their unique. Like you do go here in this game, or a different person goes here um, in this game. Uh, which I felt a little. I love that the helicopters are saying, you there, I can pick you out in a crowd. Um, it's just kind of funny how they send out, uh, they get Carlos to go to the RPD and not Jill, which feels a little funny, I'll admit. Like, I mean, you kind of want Jill to go to the RPD and go to, like, you want her to go to the star's office and be in her desk um, and do that whole thing. But it's a remake. It's not a, it's not a remaster, so it's not going to be... You know, the same game, just made prettier, uh, with better voice acting, maybe better weapons, or the, you know, just all of it functions better. But it's a remake. Um, it's, it's supposed to pay homage to the original, but not necessarily do everything the same. Which is perfect to bring up, which, being right here, you got, uh, whatever this guy's name is. I forget, was it Razo something? Dario Rosso. Thank you, sir. <laughs> um, this game definitely you know it, it plays into this like this is where you start in the original after the introduction you're here in this warehouse with this obnoxious guy and you just kind of leave him here which you do in this game as well um but uh, at first this felt like this is going to be like my point of origin in the original game even though they're like yeah you don't really need to go back there <laughs> that's your first save room but that's about it um no one's coming for you old dude dario I agree with him that starvation sounds better than uh, being eaten. Eating, being eaten doesn't sound that great. Um, but I'm do I'm glad that they're obviously that they kept to a lot of the locations. You get to come back to this warehouse. You go to the RPD, even though the story switched around a little bit. Uh, there's still the hospital. Um, you go to the basement of the hospital, but apparently there's just a instead of going to that uh, umbrella factory kind of thing that's on the outskirts of town, it just turns out to to be, um, or that old abandoned factory, it just turns out to be the, the laboratory section is underground underneath the hospital, which I didn't think was a bad deal. Um, do we got any more dialogue options with him? Can we scare him? Yeah! To kill me! <laughs> That's awesome. Hold on. I think your lawyer is dead, bro. Alright, how long does this go on for? <laughs> How much longer can this go? All right, that's it. I think that's that's it. Um, thank you, Dario. That was amazing. Um, get some more bullets. There we go. Oh yeah, I forgot we have we have the other gun here. Also, we got a knife. I should get better at using knives in these games. I never, I'm never, uh, I never get good with them, and I probably should. I don't know how easy it is to use them or not, but. But I should definitely get into it. Um, so revisiting locations is done pretty dang well. I mean, you hit up a sewer system and all that stuff. You don't. What you don't do is you're not in the park as much, in the graveyard. Um, like I said before, clock towers out. Um, oh, I can't hit them like that. Yeah, the clock towers out. Um, and then I believe there was something else. Um... But, uh, I think my main thing is, I, I mean, I would have liked to be inside clock in the clock tower location more than we were, because we weren't at all, but we did get to go there at the very least. I mean, I figured it was going to be cut the moment they're like, yeah, we're trying to go to such and such a station, and it wasn't, it was the location past the clock tower monument, so it was like, we're probably not going to go there. We will more than likely not go there. I'm trying to get my dodges down here. Um, I'm still not sure on how you have to time the dodges sometimes because I feel like, depending on the direction you're going in or uh, how much space you have, obviously as well, but uh, it just will depend on if you get grabbed or not. Sometimes I don't, I can't tell. Um. But it works much better than the originals. 
the original the original dodge mechanic was very very touch and go like sometimes it would work sometimes you're just getting grabbed and that's what it was and this one I had some difficulty um, but I think I was really just I needed to learn the timing a bit better and I, I, I was much more used to playing it uh, RE2 style RE2 remake style where you're, you know you mostly just want to shoot and then run around as much as you can except for the problem that came with that is just that the zombies in this game actually will like triple lunge at you they they're and on hardcore which I haven't played any of the other what was it like Inferno or Hellscape or whatever the hell they call the the more difficult things the more difficult uh, game difficulties words the zombies I guess get you know worse and there's more you know difficult enemies and locations they weren't before um, which is great for re replayability and makes it fun um, it's just it and on hardcore the zombies seemed actually a bit harder than re2 at least in my opinion I don't know if that's 100% the case but that's what it seemed like this whole sequence is pretty cool I enjoyed it oh we got a whoops I'm gonna get my neck choked out that's fine um the one thing I didn't know if I enjoyed was uh, not so much that they have quick time events. I mean, I guess those are quick time events. You can take your time on them, it seems. I mean, you'll probably die if you don't do it after a minute or two. But um, it seems kind of half-baked in because it's not a thing you do the entire game, which I would prefer them to be in the game or out of the game. Like, I don't want... Because you only do them in this prologue. From what I remember, you only do it in the prologue, and then you only do it at the very end when you are trying to uh, murder the nemesis. Um, you also have to crawl here, and that, that doesn't mean much. Some moments like this were really cool. Um, Carlos gets to swear. But also the, the fact that... Uh, the fact that he grabs a missile, them just showing the power of him and stuff is really cool. That's good. Hey, easy, I got you. And showing that he can't be slowed down. And Carlos is way more, <laughs> way more likable in this game than he was in the original. In the original, he just seemed like he was extremely, extremely snarky and always uh, flirting with Jill. Whereas in this one, he's like not doing it like in a in a ridiculous way but he's just occasionally like hey you're kind of cute Hope so. just not without saying so many words and then she's like well screw you because <laughs> there's a lot more going on and it's not not worth the time to deal with i'm fine personal space okay i get it let's go yeah the, the characterization of both of them i think is really well done can we go back outside I don't know why I didn't try this before. Hey, what do you know about that monster? Oh shoot. Okay. Umbrella. No need to worry, we've got you covered. Oh, that's a cute ad, I get it. I get it. Okay, yeah, we just get boxed in by cars, right? Oh, I thought there was gonna be like a thing to shoot or something over there. Alright, alright, alright. Just doing some looking around, just looking at things I haven't seen before. Central Street. Yeah, Kite Bros Railway. The Kite Bros. It's probably quicker to do this than actually walk down the stairs. I love all these movie poster ads, by the way. These are great. They actually make me quite happy. Okay, Carlos, let's go seen anything like it but it's no zombie it knows what it wants and won't stop till it gets it don't you like that in a man no thanks he's all yours yes yeah, these kind of lines are, are much more subtle and, and kind of kind of funny in a way whereas in the other game it was, it was just kind of cringy are you fucking kidding me you guys are the ones who caused all of this whoa 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 and they truly get through a lot of introduction right here with how everyone feels about the situation way quicker than in the original where it's just like we get two sentences in and then we have to run again which is kind of cool 
Um, but at the same time, they, they do set up a lot of how both of them feel about the current situation very quickly. Though I'm sure this is frustrating for the speedrunning community. Which I've uh, already watched one person like do like a bit of a run through on Inferno. Um, and this game's like pretty quick to get through, but like I mean, it takes a lot of practice apparently already because of how difficult it gets. It truly gets very difficult, which is why I think it's okay that the game is shorter because there's a lot of different difficulty modes, and that makes it you know really replayable due to just the difficulty. Uh, because it's meant to be more of an action game than, than a puzzle game, which is less like all the other Resident Evils for the most part. But, um, I mean, the original was meant to be more action-based, and it was, and it did a great job. At the same time, though, they do kind of leave almost all puzzles to the wayside. There's, like, maybe two, three. You can say that there's... I mean, the power station that you go to is kind of a bit of a maze and you have to hit buttons. So you could say it's a puzzle in a sense by thinking about, you know, strategizing where you're gonna go. But most of it just is like, run to the next place and just hit the button if you're safe and shoot and run. <laughs> There's not many times you're carrying a, uh, a, story, a story item for the most part, like, there's the vaccine and the fire hose. Well, you can thank your corporate overlords for that. I mean, the yes. bolt cutters and the well, lockpick kind of help uh, feel like that, but they're only necessary in like one or two moments. And then after that, they're just like extra ammo and items if you're looking for them. But we need help. So it feels kind of... Eh. I mean, it's it's cool that like you if you want to take the risk, you can go out and lockpick things. But uh, it's up to you at that point. So it, it, it allows for player choice, which is good. Um, you can decide whether or not you want to risk your life more for possible, you know, gain of ammo and whatnot. But um, it does feel funny that you're not always like you need a wrench to get the, the fire hose. You use the fire hose, clear out the fire, and then you need to go grab like uh, or like you don't need to fix the subway yourself like in the original. So you're not, you know getting oil, a cable, and a battery, and all this other stuff. Um, I like Mikhail in this one. Mikhail's pretty pretty awesome. And I think uh, Nikolai's also done very, very well. The characters, I think the characters stand out really well. And that's the problem with this game, is that it's really, really good. Oh, I spray some up. There you go. I wanted to look at what was in this case. Um, this game does a great job with the characters. I think, like, the characterization alone and just what it does for, for them is really, really good. Oh, they give you ammo. Excellent. Um, I think, like, that's definitely one of the big major pluses of the game. As well, it's fun. It's a fun, action-packed ride. Um, and it doesn't overstay its welcome, which is actually, I think, kind of a good thing with this kind of a game. And again, it makes sense that there's less uh less stuff going on or like there's less content maybe than the, the other games but it actually has more difficulty modes because this game is mainly meant to be you know huge action a lot of fighting and if the only thing that differs though you can't really have a separate scenario that much with like what are you going to do move the fire hose to a different location uh, you know, add extra, you know, change around the vaccine locations and whatnot. Like, I mean, there's, since there's not a lot of, there's not a lot of basically story items. So them just kind of, you know, there, there's no way to make a different type of scenario without, you know, just increasing the difficulty of the enemies. And also, I guess, adding in the store, which I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, it's interesting, and I guess if they're going to do it with any game, this is the one to do it with. Um, you know, just you earn in-game points, and then you're able to uh, able to unlock things that help you in the game, which is kind of, it's kind of cool. It's definitely more of an arcade -y kind of feel, I guess. Maybe not necessarily arcade -y, but it, in a way, it kind of feels that way. We're going to find all these uh, stupid gems, like by the way. Get this working if I plug in the right whatever it is. I didn't look at that picture before. Anyway, we're, we're screwing around, so we'll just save just in case. Um, 
So I think, like, overall, I really, really enjoyed this game. It's it's very fun. Um, um, I liked it from beginning to end. I think there were moments I had a little... I had a bit of a tough time with some of the, the boss fights, but I think that's usually me with, with Resident Evil boss fights. For me, either it clicks really fast or it doesn't, and I'm just, just pumping them full of lead. Um, which is fine, you know. I learn, and it works out. Um, also, I really like how they uh, they write on the wall or the door there. It's like here, go here. Does it say yeah here? <laughs> Is that already dead for this mode? I'm curious. Yeah, I guess that's already dead. Wow. Okay. Yeah, it is assisted. So. Um, this is the part that I really wish lasted much longer. Is being out in the streets here. The streets are are nice. I get I, you get to see a lot of the buildings you go to from out here, which is kind of cool. Um, but I wish this lasted longer. You don't have a lot of moments where you have more than like one direction to head in. Um, after your first meetup with Nemesis, it feels like you're you're basically you know you're going down corridors. You're kind of on rails. There's no real way out of you know what you're already doing. I guess we're just we're just gonna clean up. It'll be easy. Um, shadows are nice. I do. I mean, I like the the characterization of the city. Is the problem? Is like it it looks beautiful um the the voice recording is nice it's playing over everything trying to tell everyone to be calm and you know things are gonna be fine and it's not um there's a lot more like you get to look into store windows more obviously because this is a, a legitimate you know not just a rendered game it's it's literal 3d it's in 3d this is the store i didn't go in i don't think that's right maybe that's where it is i missed that blue gem the first time i want to figure out what's in it um, I would also like to get better at the dodging, so maybe we'll screw around with that a bit. Carlos, I've reached the main avenue. Which way do I go? Um, I think with the original, I didn't ever have any question on what I was trying to do. Um, I think for the most part, I generally knew. I think at the beginning, I was a little, little concerned because there was a lot of locations you could go to, but not a lot of, uh direction other than like well you need to get out of the city but once you find the trolley they're like yeah you you need to help us basically break through or you know fix this trolley and then we will be able to uh then we'll be able to escape and then the, then it's just all from there they'll give you pretty clear goals you know help save jill just escape from the city all that sort of stuff In this game, I think they did the same. Like, it's it's very straightforward. And again, after this, it becomes very linear. They do a good job of highlighting that barrel, too, which I might might leave it for now. Um, wow, that, that auto-aim that auto -aim really makes you bob and weave a little bit with it, huh? Whew. That's annoying. And this is, like, hardcore easy mode, isn't it? Wow. Um... I, I'm glad. I think obviously it, it works very well for this game, but I'm, I'm very glad they kept with the uh, the destructible or the environmentals uh, destruction. <laughs> you can shoot things, and they do things. <laughs> this game did a great job with um, oh yeah the the low frames to keep objects that are far away not take up too much stuff. Um, Having destructible, destructive crates. I can't, I can't word this very well. They have explosive crates and these electronic generators that work really well. I think environmental, <laughs> that reload sound. The environment uh, and the destruction and other things that you can use to help protect yourself works really well and I'm glad they kept it from the original. Somebody grab me or not. Um, and I, I really, oh gosh, it's it, it frustrates me to no end. I really like the fact that we can go through the donut shop or we can go up that way. Like you have multiple directions in which you can go, um, but we don't have that option for terribly long. It it really just gets rolled over really quickly, um, which is too bad. 
uh, because I like the, f I, in the original, it lasts for quite a while longer, and I like the feeling of being stalked and chased, um, and we, and we get that early on, but then it, it really dies out over, over time really quickly. I'm just saving over all my hardcore saves, it's fine. Um... Yep, yep, yep. Um, and there's not really a laundry list too much of stuff you need to do while you're out. I mean, it would be kind of cool if, kind of like when you're doing the trolley uh, mission of just finding all the equipment and other things you need to, to fix to fix the uh, actual trolley, um, or train in this case. Um, like, you have multiple places to go, so wherever you end up going, you usually end up finding something that helps you, whether it's an item you need to combine to make what you need, or if it's the thing itself. Um, and so it's... Oh! There it is. So it's, it's a little frustrating when uh, you, you just are only given one thing to do, and it's like, well, just, just you know, go turn on the power. All right, now just go, you know, fix the train up, or fix the, the route. And then once that's done, well, you're done. Get come back, and then that that's where we end. Basically, end the whole normal nemesis chasing you bits and normal nemesis in general. Um, it's not much longer after that that he's uh, starts transforming and turning and doing different things. Um, so that kind of sucks. You're still alive, aren't you? Yeah, buddy. Um. Hmm. I don't know. It, it is a little frustrating to me. I mean, I like the game. It's really, really fun, and I, I could see myself playing through it multiple times. It just, it just does feel like it's missing some things. Um, so this is looking at things that I have yet to experience until you know, watching a video of someone else who uh, has played this game uh, mention and talk about is there is quite a lack of costumes. And uh, other things to help you want to replay the game. There's a lot less uh, rewards for playing through the game. Um, so, like, one of the frustrating things is obviously less costumes. Apparently, there's no longer an S plus rating you can get. Apparently, uh, it's just S. And there's not really a... Uh, um, there's a lot less, I guess... Uh, rules on how you can get to s like you can use unlimited weapons you can you can obviously have a, a lot of those bonus things from the shops and it's and that's okay um i'm just gonna have a ton of pistol ammo aren't we um which is fine not fitting that Oof. um and so there's a lot of little things like that, I guess, that just kind of, um, for some people, are, are annoying. And I can I can totally understand, because, like, getting S+, plus on a run in RE2 is, felt really, really cool. And you felt really, really accomplished. Whereas in this, I guess you can eventually, depending on the points you get and how many times you've played it before, and uh, things you buy and whatnot, like, you can you can kind of just cheese your way to a good, a good ranking and a good time, I guess. I mean, you have to be good at knowing where you need to go and doing it quickly. But uh, if you have unlimited weapon ammo and stuff, I guess that's not really as hard. We're just gonna we're just gonna shoot everything we see for funsies. Um, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't really need it. We're just gonna. Did I really pick it up? I didn't mean to. <laughs> yeah, nine three seven. So yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things, again, a lot of things I liked about it, a lot of things um, that could be a little bit better. So yeah, the ranking thing for me, it, it does, it bothers me a little bit. It's not the end of the world, but it is a little funny. And also, uh, again, with the uh, uh, the lack of costumes, I guess. I mean, I, I have the other, actually, heck, why aren't we doing that? Let's, uh, I mean, and this is for quote-unquote pre-ordering it. I bought it the day before, like, because I knew I was going to play it anyway. But we'll do this to them. Um, 
which I guess you can buy one other costume for Jill. I mean, it looks rather similar uh, in this. Um, then, like, her, her costume... Well, I mean, yeah, you see her shoulders, I guess. But, I mean, the costumes are generally the same. Um, so, like, I mean... And, and the thing is, is, like, it's not that hard to add those things. So, I mean, I'm sure they could add them down the line. But it's just kind of sad that they just didn't do it in the first place. Um... Wow, that auto-aim is really actually kind of... It's more annoying than anything, actually. I don't know. Um, I don't know if I like it. Um, which is fine. Like, I don't plan on playing uh, unassisted a lot or at all, really. Um, what was it? 927 or 92? I already forgot the numbers. I might go look at it again. Again, I'm not going for a rush mode on this. Um, this is just for funsies. Yeah, 937. Keep wanting to see those doll things. I'm always bad at those kind of shoot the collectibles thing. Uh, but anyway. I mean, I'm glad they kept that. That was a nice touch. You know, just having something that you can find and shoot. and the, All those kind of collectible kind of things are always fun. So much ammo. Oh! Didn't see that one coming. But hey, we're unassisted. It doesn't matter. Jeez, that's that's amazingly easy. Which is cool if people want to play through game is easy. Uh, was it like nine, three, seven? I think there it is. This is the scope, right? Yeah, pistol scope. Um, I'm glad they, you know. They still had, you know, uh, ammunition types and uh, all that sort of stuff. Uh, you know, making ammunition and kind of having it based on the difficulty you're you're on. You know, all that, all that kind of stuff is good for replayability and having a little bit of luck to to stuff. Actually, I wonder if you get better as you go because I think I think the original actually said that like the more you craft, the better you get at crafting uh, ammunition. Which I like. I think that's fun. Jim's crabs. Go get some crabs. Um, let's see. Uh, yeah. I mean, you don't really need that many healing items when you just heal on your own. I'm trying to think on what else this game would need. I think I would like have liked one more Nemesis fight with him being uh, bipedal. <laughs> I think I would have also liked... Uh... Again, I feel like I also would have liked more open ground to run around in. I think they did a good job with the levels they did give us, or the locations. But I would have liked a little bit more on that front. Um, I don't think the game is like too hard or anything. I think it was a few times I had a rough time understanding what they wanted me to do. But uh, at the same time, for that was mostly just for boss fights um, as well. Boss fights I, I actually really, really enjoyed. I know uh, boss fights are, for most games, I feel like, are usually very... Uh, uh, people are very, are very divisive. You know, people either really like or really hate boss fights, uh, depending on what it is. Or who it is or how it is. Um, just stick with that. Sure, why not? Um, let's save over some of the older ones. But uh, these boss fights, I actually had a lot of fun with, I think, all of them. I think uh, none of them left me, like, super frustrated. Other, other than just the idea, I was like, dang it, I almost had that. We were really close, you know, that kind of thing. Um, actually, real quick, let's, let's go to the... Uh, or we'll get the lockpick and then we'll start doing that kind of thing. Just want to start opening up all this stuff before Nemesis shows up, just for fun. I really like this character. They, they, they introduced him and then just immediately gone. <laughs> this is a little tragic. This is a little sad. Her reactions are very perfect, though. Oh, stars, this so. This game feels a lot more 
modern horror horror movie and a lot more uh it feels less campy even though this guy is very like you know almost he might as well be twirling his mustache kind of evil bad guy but um he's a really good bad guy though they they did a great job with whoever voice acted him and the whoever they modeled him after they did a really good job which actually is now reminding me of a not a conspiracy theory but a weird thing about how um Apparently, for, like, a lot of the times when they get, um, when they get the voice actors for these characters and things, and when they want to do their facial models and stuff, like, for women, apparently, they always just choose the voice actor, but a lot of times for men, they just mix together a bunch of men's faces, and I don't know why men's faces are just so imperfect for them that they just can't handle <laughs> just using one dude's face. It's just got to be, like, five dudes. Or it doesn't work, apparently. <laughs> I don't get it, but it's interesting. Uh, I, I can't say that. I know that for Nikolai, for Carlos, for anyone specifically, but um, it's interesting, to say the least. Oh, shoot. That was quick. <laughs> oh, the sadness. We're in caution, oh no. Where's this other dog? I want to dodge properly. Yeah. Yeah. Oop, that was not, that was not how you do that. Come on, buddy. See, so, yeah, I like that it still lets you dodge even if it wasn't like the perfect dodge. Oh, dang it, he got on top. No. Am I dead? Probably not. Yeah, that would be. That would be too tough for all the assisted level players. It'd be just too difficult. Probably could have just let my my health restore itself. I should shoot these guys. You can, hey. I imagine you'd be able to. This blank wall really does scream nemesis attack, doesn't it? Um, let's see. What else do I have to say about this? So, because I feel like. This game does a lot of things good. I think the whole ride in and of itself is fun, and it definitely is definitely easily replayable, in my opinion. Will everyone, though? Probably not. I think being a big fan of Resident Evil is important and liking this game, and as well, uh, those who really like Resident Evil should purchase it. Um, those who are okay on how they feel about Resident Evil probably shouldn't. Um, at least not right away, just due to, uh, it not having as much as expected. I mean, if they definitely added some costumes and flipped around, um, how they did the ranking system, I could definitely see it being more popular than it is currently, or at least people being happier with it. I think a lot of people, I mean, a lot of people were arguing again that it was too short and that it, uh, people shouldn't have paid 60 bucks for it, but I mean, I, I feel like... They shouldn't have had people pay that much for just this game. E how it is. I mean, the game itself is fine, but just some of the incentives are not really there, like I was saying. Also, the fact that uh, I have not yet... I've yet to try uh, Resident Evil Resistance, and I'm not sure how good and or bad or terrible it is. <laughs> um, I hear it's hard to find people to play with at this point, which is not a good sign. Um, and I hear some people say it was kind of tacked on. I do know that it was, uh, I heard that it was made by a different company, that they outsourced it. So obviously it's a little different. Sorry about my zoom here. We're gonna try and fix that up real quick. Um, but yeah, I guess that doesn't really sit terribly well with everybody as well. Um, um, I think some people think that that was a bit of a, a way of saying like, oh, hey, no, we did enough to uh, make it all worth $60 because you get resistance for free and it's, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's one package, you know, um, where I, I can see that, um, 
but not everyone buys resident evil because it's a multiplayer experience um that's not really the case um uh which is hilarious we just picked up the case um it's more the fact that uh it's always been a good single player horror game um and this one definitely holds up its uh part in the legacy of resident evil i mean it's the more action-based game I think uh, something I would have really liked to see, going back to things that I wish were in the game, were uh, the split-second decisions. Um, even if they're really, really small, um, some of those would have been really nice. If if they gave you just two different, maybe two different ways you could go. Like if it was, you have to choose. I mean, I mean, taking it from the original. I mean, like you have to choose between going down into the sewer or you keep moving through a parking garage and you know that nemesis is behind you so if you keep going in the through the parking garage you know that nemesis will follow you 100 percent. like they make it visible enough that nemesis wouldn't be able to fit into the sewer so then if you choose hey i'm gonna go down to the sewer all right you're choosing to forego fighting nemesis right now but what you do have to deal with is whatever set of monsters we put down there so you're trading, you know, fighting the big bad for fighting a bunch of, you know, smaller but, you know, still dangerous enemies. Or if you choose to stay in the parking garage, uh, then you're either fighting Nemesis or you're running and then being chased by him. So then that gives you the option of, I think I can take him slash outrun him or I would rather, <laughs> um, or you could say I would rather... Um, just not have to deal with him altogether if at all possible. Thank you. And then, you know, push past him. Um, which is, is nice. Giving people options in video games is what makes them fun. You want to play a video game because you have control, not because you're, you're being ham-fisted into a specific, uh, situation all the time. Um, you want to, you want to have control and you want to be able to, you know, decide what happens to you and how it, how it works and how it goes. Um, that's what, that's what makes games fun. And so I think that with them getting rid of some of those split second decisions, even if they would have been small or, you know, not terribly exclusionary. I mean, w with what I was saying, like, um, about giving you two different ways to go, like, I mean, it, it could have been really cool if they decided, Hey, you only get to see this one part of the game. If you choose to go in this specific direction, because if they did that, that immediately adds replayability because, um, like I still have it for the original and I actually really want to go back and play the original again right now because of the fact that, um, when I played it, can't break any of these. Okay. So it keeps, it keeps all of the ones that you've already broken. So that's kind of cool. So you only have to find the new or the rest and not the originals or the original ones you already shot. That's cool. Um, but basically if they did that, if they were to say, um, in the original where there was that moment where you get to go to the factory and there's a bridge on your way there and you can either jump down yourself and try to escape nemesis or you can push him down i still have no idea what happens if you jump down yourself i don't know if he follows you um i don't know what here it freaking is I'm so mad i don't even know what ha comes out of the uh the actual uh device when you put in the gem but i'm excited now um you know, it, it doesn't, uh, it, it, oh, bleh, bleh, bleh. I, I'm getting better at talking. I swear it's happening slowly, but it's happening. Um, but essentially if they allow that, if they allow for there to be specific locations that you only, you can go to, or you only get to choose once, like you have the choice. And then if you don't choose it at that moment, then you cannot do it for the rest of your current playthrough, unless you start a new game or go back. That instantly makes replayability because you want to see what you missed out on. You want to see if there was an item that you could have got. You want to see, I feel like I'm missing something right here right now. Oh, it's handgun ammo. Um, is it in here? Yeah, of course it is. Like you want to see if there's an item you missed out on, especially in Resident Evil where you need to go to a specific place to get a specific weapon or else you, you miss out on it half the time. Um, gunpowder, red herb. Handgun, gunpowder, gunpowder, green herb, uh, typewriter. There's a simple lock there, but I think that's just more gun and typewriter, and we're going to get a million of everything anyway. Um, now that we got the boxes, we'll just 
We'll just open them, put them away, and we'll just keep moving. Um, stupid blue gem. Um, uh, hmm. Yeah, the, the, the split choices, like the, the different things of just stay and fight, run out of there, you know, jump into the sewer, climb up. Um, what are the other things? Like try and blind Nemesis or electrocute him, you know, like all those different things really could have added something, and I would have really liked it. I mean, the fights with Nemesis I enjoyed. I would have liked one more of him being normal, though, because I think we only really get one like face to face there's nowhere to go kind of fight with him that he's normal and bipedal uh him running around like a dog though was kind of terrifying um i thought it was crazy in the original when he you know kind of metamorphosized into uh just you know four-legged crazy beast thing and it was cool i liked it um i just wish that uh I mean, well, I, I mean, I really like that they got to realize his uh, full freedom of movement, <laughs> because before in the in the original, obviously they couldn't really have him run around like he did in this one. Um, they don't have the technology for that. Um, but I don't know. I wish they used it differently between because they have two fights that are basically almost exactly the same, which kind of sucked. They're slightly different, but they're very similar. Also, this cutscene is great. A lot of people hate this section. I actually think it's really cool. <laughs> I think it's very creepy and does a great job of making you feel disgusting. <laughs> it's the most horror movie thing. And the fact of her inability to do anything else until she uh, vomits is great. They do a real good job with this. I really, really liked it. Also, I like that it is a maze. Like, it being a maze is, like, the best part. Um, I think there's uh, something for doing this in a quick time limit or, or time period or something like that, but... Two shots in this. Wow, that's... That's generous of them. Goodness. Oh, reach it, reach it. Oh, nice. <laughs> you missed, buddy. I often forgot about the dodge, um, unless it was like a boss fight, because that's all I ever asked for in RE2, <laughs> is like, dang, I would really, really like a, uh, oop, I would really like a, um, a dodge button during the boss fights, because obviously the bosses have that very long, they usually have like very long reach and stuff, you know, you're able to get hit from pretty far, um, whereas in this game, when I'm fighting regular creatures, <laughs> Uh, there were times I would forget. Um, which is my fault, obviously. Wait, go back down. Isn't there the other one up here? I thought there was something up there before. Um, I really thought we could have done without the boxes, but I guess the boxes are okay. hate holding oh, oh hold sometimes I hate these interaction buttons because sometimes you really do like the just miss the button whatsoever um, this is not the quickest way now that they broke open the, the door but I guess they only do it on on the way back there huh or like when you're on that side yeah because we just came from there interesting Still something in here, huh? I'm now very curious. It might just be another, like, green herb or something. Just because they don't want you to... Yeah. I guess the perfect slow-mo ones only happen when you're aiming. 
Yeah, now we have everything, so it's not that exciting. They mostly leave you alone and assisted. That's cute. I mean, I know they would leave you alone in hardcore uh, when I would get to one or two of the power switches. Like, as long as you had shot one, the rest were just running away and getting ready for the next time that you turned around. Um, but again, I did really like this section when I played through it the first time. Like, it was creepy. It was fun. Um, I, I like that it was grotesque. Um, it just felt very classic horror movie, and I liked that. Hold on. Auto zoom. What can you do? Get a better camera. That's what you can do. It's on the list. On the list. Um, yeah. So no matter what, uh, so no matter what people say, this game is good. It is a good game that just really. The features, the, some of the things it just needs more of. Again, more costumes. Um, the the amount of difficulty levels is great. Um, Nemesis is cool. I still get hit by him sometimes. It's great. Um, you can do that kind of thing. I feel like... Um, I don't know if you can actually beat him up on this one. I'm gonna try. Yeah, you can. Cool. Does he drop anything on this one? Is that a no? Oh, do you have to hit him in his chest thing? If I use up all this ammo right now, because I don't really mind. Did he not drop anything in this? Because for the most of mine, I, I mostly just ran from him. There it is. Hey. Taking that. What's in this guy? I figured it would be like the OG, but for the most part, I just I just ran. Because, yeah, an extended mag. That's nice. <sighs> that thing's huge. Not compensating for nothing, are we, Nemi? Um... Because when I first came down this alleyway, and this is what I was concerned about for the game, I was concerned it was going to be different in this case. I thought I had that. <laughs> um, what I thought was going to be the case was, um, I think I was low on health and he just like outright punched me, so I died. And the game, in its little hint, you know, you know, you died, wait for the game to come back section, it uh, said, hey you should run from nemesis because this this cat's invulnerable like you are not you're not gonna beat him up he's gonna beat you up you should just get moving and so i was like oh crap did they remove actually killing nemesis or doing like the nemesis kills like is that just what they did and that's obviously not the case um as i look now and get my face beaten in Can we get something else? It's not really looking like it. So I guess we already got one. I'm guessing? Yeah, he just sounds like he's reconstructing his bones in there. Um, so I don't know. Now this is something that I didn't, uh, I guess I didn't register when I played the original. Or I don't know if it's actually stated in the original. Um, um, but that Nemesis is actually just a tyrant that has been, or that is being controlled by a, a parasite on the inside. There's probably a memo that I might have read in the original and missed it. Or maybe that's something they added or told in a later game. I don't know. But, um... I really liked that they talked about that. I thought that was a, like a rather interesting, uh, interesting development. Uh, in all honesty. Um, hey, bro. Hi, bro. Um, where is the? There's the garage. 
He has an herb over there. Oh, we need to go out the other door, didn't we? Yeah, we did. Didn't need to go to the pharmacy. Where do we need to go? The subway control. That's right. I'll come back out, buddy. We're going to have a shocking good time. Yeah, so I guess this whole encounter counts as one. So the one time that I actually downed Nemesis, which I thought was the whole idea, or, or I thought the game was telling you that's what you should do when I did it, was, um, that was dumb, um, was when you're running away from him before you get into the subway. Back again. Because of the fact that, uh, what was it? Oh, they, yeah, you, you're running down a hallway, and there's a vent that you're supposed to run, or you kick open, basically, and you're able to escape in. But all I saw when I ran down there at first was those explosive barrels, and I was like, okay, this is our, our chance to fight back kind of a thing. And it did knock him down, and I did get a an ammo crate, but it was, it was literally just shotgun shells. And I was like, wow, so if there are moments to kill him, you only get, like, crappy... You get like four shotgun shells. So I was like, that was really anticlimactic and not worth it. Um, like that, that was really dumb. Um, so I was like, I guess there's not much of a good reason to actually try and down the nemesis. Like that was something I could complain about, but a full box of donuts is actually great. Let me tell you, Ooh, they get messed up. Um, All right, where are we headed? Oh yeah. This whole thing. So you want to go to FA, then you want to go to RA. And you want to go to St. Michael's, whatever. And then you want to go like one, was it like one, three, two, or something like that? I don't remember. Is that right? No, that's right. Oh yeah, you want to go two first. Um, and and this is the thing is like this is the only puzzle, which is kind of a bummer. Um, so just change you to two, like. It's the most brute forceable puzzle. Like I didn't re even look at it that hard. Like it, it just lets you brute force it. In a very, it's very easy. Um, I would have liked a little something else. Um, because the, I think what they really wanted to do is they wanted to keep up the intensity as much as possible. Um, but I feel like they would have kept up the intensity way more if they actually just allowed you to be chased by, to be chased by Nemesis way more, in the cityscape. Instead of just like, oh come on, oh this these things are gross. By the way, I hate I hate this. I hate everything about this. Oh shoot! Um. Okay. Um. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, she is dunking on my terrible sh shooting right now. The aim assist really doesn't help, I swear. It honestly makes it worse. Um, so there are times where I feel like dodging early is actually worse than dodging late. I like the parasite. The whole parasite thing. I like the... You know, the... That he's, you know, infesting any other, you know zombie or person out there so that it's way harder for you to progress, which is cool. Yeah. Um, so there are cool things about this game. There's, there just are moments where I don't know. I wish there was something else. Just a little bit harder puzzles. A little bit more f like free roam city moments. Because you would definitely feel stalked more by Nemesis if you were actually out and about running around the city and then he actually just... Oh, thanks buddy. Oh. Oh. Nope, I take it back. Oh yeah, we're supposed to spam stuff. Which I also thought was weird considering they, they had like a weird amount of QTEs and like the dodge button and all that, but then they're like, yeah, just spam on this. I don't know. There's a lot of interesting decisions in this game. I, I mean, it's, again, it's just, it's fun. It's just, there are some things that I, I wish were a little different. I think I, I, I couldn't have complained once I started playing it originally. Like, it was really, really good. Um, but the more I thought about it, the more I look at it, it's like, 
there are some things they probably could have done better. Um, but I really appreciate this game. Like, I think it's a fun time. You can't, you can't argue that it's like bad, bad in any way, shape or form. Like what they did is designed well. Um, I, but I do think everyone will agree it could have used a little bit more. Um, and that's, that's sad to say. Um, and it sucks that there are people who are like, yeah, no, they just, they just figured re project resistance would be enough to, to earn everybody over there. Get an extra bag. I could have gotten that. Dang it. The power stones. Yeah, no, I didn't get that other that other gem on my first go around, which makes me sad. Makes me sad. But I do love shotgun shells, let me tell you. Um I, I love the look of the shotgun in this game, by the way. That I think that's my favorite weapon. I know it's not like the most like OP or crazy or anything, but like, dude, let me tell you, I really love the shotgun and how it looks. Uh, we'll save real quick. Again, this is a, the chill run through. Um, actually, we'll take a we'll take a quick, like five minute break, just because I haven't taken a break yet. And we'll I'll gather some more of my thoughts and more of my impressions of this game, and uh, we'll get back to it. So uh, take a five minute break. I will uh, see you. All in a uh, grab some water, a snack, and I'll see you. Hold on. 